Hello people of the internet, I am Island, and in today's video I'm going to be doing a different kind of video from what I normally do on my channel. I am going to be doing a full week in a Minecraft mod pack known as Prominence. I'm going to be doing this video kind of like a 100 days style video, however, since I don't really have much time in between work and other life stuff, um, yeah, I'm just going to be doing a little over a week. I'm going to be doing 8 days because, you know, Minecraft has a day zero for some reason. Uh, I hope you guys do enjoy the video. I put quite a bit of effort into this one. Uh, however, all I do is ask that you let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Anyways, let's get into day zero. I started off by creating the world and naming it Prominence Burn after an attack of a not so great father figure. Let me know down in the comments below if you know whose attack this is. Anyway, I then immediately get into the world and head for a tree. For a few reasons, actually. Number one, of course, being that's how every Minecraft world starts. But the other reason is, in order to start the quest line of this pack, you have to obtain a fruit or a vegetable. So obviously I decide to head for an apple straight away. After claiming the early quests, I start to create some wooden tools. As I do this, however, I realize that by putting a stick in the crafting table, I could create something called a spirit stick. This item has the ability to transform into a sword called the spirit sword. And as I activated the stick, soon it became a fiery sword. From its description, I found out that the sword had an ability that allowed me to gain a stack of Burning Spirit. Burning Spirit adds more power to my attacks, however, if I surpass 5 stacks, I will begin to burn myself. Which you know is pretty scary, but also pretty awesome that my early game power will also have some drawbacks. After dispatching of some of Wulu's skinnier cousins, I chopped down an apple blossom tree. These trees are actually quite interesting because most of the fruit trees in this mod pack have to be crafted with the fruit and then some random sapling, but these actually drop the correct sapling, which is pretty nice. I also forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, uh, this pack also uses the same tree chopping mod as Dawncraft and uh, I believe RLcraft, which I really like. I then used the wood I got to make some chests for another one of the quests. This quest gave me a gold ingot, a blank chest upgrade, and two backpack tanks as the rewards. I quickly went to kill some cows so I could get a backpack, since all I needed now was leather and a sleeping bag. After obtaining the leather, I went out and searched for some sheep to make a sleeping bag out of. However, I came up empty handed and eventually found a mountain to dig into the side of for the night. After arriving at the base of this mountain, I made some stone tools and began to mine some copper for future upgrades to some chests and whatever else is in this pack. I then mine out a small room for me to hide out in overnight and even put up a wooden door. After setting myself up to hide for the night, I looked through the quest for a little bit and realized that I had already killed a sheep. And actually, I had already killed three of those Mareep wannabes. So after realizing this, I made the sleeping bag for the backpack and quickly fell asleep and slept away night zero. I woke up on the morning of day one and began mining some coal. After gathering some, I also grabbed a little bit of tin from the Tech Reborn mod, and then headed around the hill to observe my surroundings. In the distance, I spotted a quartz building and decided to check it out soon. Along the way, I picked up some random crops such as pepper and even apple trees. I also got some mystical flowers from the Botania mod, which I have no idea about. I also crafted the blank chest upgrade into a copper one to complete a quest. Doing this only gave me some XP. However, I also completed the backpack quest earlier, so this gave me a diamond. With the XP I gained, I decided to level up some of my stats. That's right, in this pack you can actually upgrade stuff like your health and attack damage. However, each level costs 5 XP levels. I ended up with 3 available points to spend, so I decided to use one on constitution for an extra half a heart, and one on strength. I also put one into fire magic for some reason. While walking around, I discovered a small camp-like area with barrels and composters with bone meal in them. This wasn't much of a find, however, right after this I discovered a meteorite and went to break it open. Inside was a ton of coal blocks, which I quickly harvested with the vein miner that I discovered on the spot. Inside the meteorite was a chest filled with some pretty great loot, which contained two more diamonds, bringing our total up to three. I also discovered that in my inventory were a pair of divine boots that I had no idea where I had gotten them from. Anyway, I then fell asleep inside the meteorite, finishing off day one. On day two, I continued to mine the coal blocks, and from doing so, I got a pair of divine leggings. So I guess mining meteorites gives you divine armor? I don't really know, though. 
I finished mining the coal of the meteorite and moved out of it pretty soon, and then I headed towards the quartz building from before. On the way over, I ran into a giant bird carcass, which just broke into bones, except for the skull. So I took it with me, and then headed towards the quartz building once more. When I arrived at the quartz building, I found out it was part of an archaeology mod, and I found some pots inside that held some decent loot. The only thing worth noting from this loot was an enchanted book with the enchant potato recovery tool, whatever that is. Right after the archaeology building, however, I found a lush chest from the probably chest mod which looks like one of the living chests from the Terraria game. Uh, however, I didn't have much room for all the interesting loot that was inside, so I just picked it up with the carry-on mod and carried it over to a nearby house. Arriving at the house, I put the lush chest down and began searching through the loot barrels around the building. There wasn't much of anything of importance in these barrels, so I went upstairs to do the same, where I ended up finding a fisherman and two beds. I decided to take one of the beds with me. However, soon after realizing there was way too much loot for me to carry, I decided to put the bed back and stay in this house for a while. I shoved all my stuff in the lush chests and then realized that I really needed to do some sorting, so I put it all in a bunch of different barrels around the house. Uh, while doing this, I added some barrels around the building and even put some up to look like cabinets. When I finished sorting all my loot out, I decided to take a brisk night walk. Right outside my door was yet another lush chest. I went to open it, but suddenly it attacked me. Some of the chests from the probably chest mods are actually mimics that will attack you when you try to open them. I tried to fight it with my stone sword, but surprisingly it was good at evading my attacks. It got a few hard hits on, in on me, and I fled into my home to recover. After eating some bread, I turned my spirit stick into a spirit sword and used its ability until I was at burning spirit 4. I then rushed outside to fight the mimic. It only took a couple shots to take it out, however the beast got me down to half health. Not that it matters too much since I'm not playing hardcore mode. After recovering from the battle, I explored the surrounding areas of my new house. While doing so, I found some fruits and vegetables to add to my collection. Maybe one day I'll plant all of these modded crops. I also found out that the Mimic dropped a fractured key, which if I get three of these I can craft them into a suspicious key that will let me turn any of my chests into a Mimic. I'm assuming it will be one that is like a pet that follows me around with my loot in it, but I'm not too sure. I I then slept the night away once more. Day 3 I woke up and began to travel. Nearby my house I discovered a grave. I did what any good citizen would do and dug up the stone slab to check what was in the coffin. This person was only buried with a few pieces of amethyst, a mythic rarity necklace, and two magic books. One with the staggering 3 enchant and the other with the air magic spell known as Thunderstrike. Which, believe it or not, I actually recognize. This spell tome is from the Archon mod, which was in the Dark RPG mod pack that I used to play. Anyways, after covering up the evidence, I headed off once more. After slaughtering a few cows with my spirit sword, I found yet another lush chest. This one was a real one, and I got two bundles out of it. Soon after, I found a giant black skull by the river. One of the blocks was missing its texture, however. I checked the inside of the skull for loot, but couldn't find anything. However, right after that, I found yet another giant bird carcass. This time, I realized that the skull was called a mask, so I equipped it, and now I can wear a bird skull on my head everywhere I go. It's completely nor normal, I swear. After traveling some more, I found a whole yard full of graves for me to loot. I looted this place for everything I had. I even took some anvils and some gravestones, and even found a zombie spawner, which I transported back to the gravesite near my house. Who knows, maybe one day this will come in handy. For now, though, I just lit it up and went to bed. Day 4 I went out in the front of my house and wrote something very true on my recently acquired gravestone. Unless someone in my personal life is asking and then I'm 100% just making jokes here. I accidentally made way too many spirit sticks and went out to a windmill in the distance. Some pillagers awaited me there, however, standing next to me with burning spirit 5, they were nothing. Something I don't think I've mentioned yet is when you quit holding the spirit sword in your hand it quickly loses durability unless you go back to it. It doesn't help much to put it in your offhand either. However, since they only cost a stick, it doesn't really matter that much. When I went into the windmill, I found a chest with some leggings that boost magic, as well as some tech items that I have no idea about. And I also think I got one of the eyes for the end portal, but I'm not too sure if that's what it is. When I got to the top of the windmill, I found two chests with tons of iron, tech items, and in total from this place, I got three goat horns. I then headed over to a modded pillager tower that couldn't handle the heat. On the way over, however, I got a little too excited with my sword skill. I reached level 6 of the effect and learned why it's called Burning Spirit. 
However, I made it to the tower okay, except for some burnt edges. The tower had some pretty subpar loot until I made it up to the top and received a free waystone. This will be really helpful when it comes to traversal and adventure. Before heading over to a little archer tower, I fought a creeper in whatever the hell this nightmare is. In the tower, I once again found some pretty trashy loot until I got to the very top. In this chest, there wasn't only a waystone, but also three free diamonds. When I got to the bottom of the tower, there were many mobs waiting to give me a hug. So I ran off for a second to charge up my burning spirit. I then took out a few mobs, but then saw a little pillager. Yeah, I may be able to take most things out, but I don't think Burning Spirit would carry me through a raid. So I decided to go home and drop some loot off. On the way, I decided to level up a bit. I had two skill points, so I put one into health and one into luck. On day five, I set up one of my waystones and labeled it home, and then decided to mess with the carry-on mod a little bit. I did this by carrying a water buffalo in my house, and then going upstairs and messing with the villager as well. I then went back outside and brought back someone I expected to give me a mission to kill one of Michael Jackson's underlings, but all it did was squawk. Also, when I looked up, the water buffalo was nowhere to be seen, which was pretty weird considering I didn't leave the door open or go very far. In order to replace this hairy beast, I brought in an yet another squawking menace. I then headed off to a village I saw on my way back from the mage tower the night before. However, on the way I got distracted by a coral chest. All that was inside was a new ring, some iron, some coral, and some other water items. In the distance, I saw a building from the boss's mass destruction mod, I think. However, some of the textures were missing. I found another lush chest, but it was just another mimic, so now we have two fractured keys. By the time I made it to the village, it was already dark. I found a bounty board, but none of the bounties were worth hunting. I also found a ton of hunter buildings, so I got quite a bit of leather and enderpearls out of them. It feels quite liberating to be able to steal from villagers again with no consequences after playing Dawncraft for so long. Oh no, my inner sociopath is escaping. Anyway, I claimed the waystone of the village, which was being watched over by a clay golem. I then went to a wizard shack and got some wands that I have no idea how to use. However, in that shack, I did learn that if you use amethyst on an item frame, it'll turn it invisible. So I may use that later on in this video. I then went to the blacksmith and found a lotus flower from Botania. I don't know what it does in this mod, but I really could use the energy from a lotus drink right about now. Outside the village was a small circle structure. I walked up to it to begin the scold it for breaking the number one rule of Minecraft when it lit up. It was a portal to what I'm guessing leads to the Dead Cells dimension, because it's from the Mind Cells mod. I've played a little bit of Dead Cells, but I don't know too much. However, I do recognize some of the items in JEI, so I am quite excited to check it out. However, I don't do it this week, so let me know if you want to see it in the next installment. I marked the portal on my map and then began to sort my inventory while an ogre walked toward me. I thought I was prepared, but I'll just let you guys watch what happened. Yeah, so there's death number one of this mod pack. Of course, it wouldn't be one of my videos without a stupid death of some sort. As I died, the sun was rising, so that makes this day number six, in which I headed back to where I died. Because unlike Dawncraft, I actually do lose my loot in this pack. On the way back, I felt naked, so I picked up a bird skull to wear. When I got back to where I died, I realized that my loot is preserved in a grave. I'm just lucky the rule, treat people the way you want to be treated, didn't apply here. After getting my loot back, I decided to explore a little more. I ended up stumbling upon the Daily Planet, which is pretty sad because I prefer to get my news from the Daily Bugle. However, inside I found someone a little more interesting than Lois Lane. I left the fully maxed out cartographer where I found him and headed into yet another mage tower. At the bottom of the tower, I found the most useful hoe ever. It had the enchantment collecting on it, so anything I broke would be deposited in my inventory. However, it was already half broken, so that was sad. As I headed up the mage tower this time, I gathered the skulls. Yeah, I think I may have had a bit of a problem while recording this video. I promise I'm not a necrophile or anything. I'm just trying to cosplay as Cubone. Anyway, change the subject. I found yet another waystone at the top of this mage tower. From the top of the tower I also spotted some cobblestone, so I climbed down to figure out what it was. When I got close, I was terrified to find out it was a perfect replication of Spider-Man's lucky sock. I didn't want to invade anyone's privacy, so I went back the way I came, and stumbled upon a zombie village that had an obsession with oak logs for some reason. There was nothing worth noting in the village, so I stole the coffee machine from the church since no one in town could step in there anyway. I then headed back home where I found that I had left the door open. There was a water buffalo by the door, but I don't know for sure if it was the one I brought in or not. If so, I don't know where he hid in the house. 
Luckily, neither of my Kasugai crows escaped, so I still have hope of receiving a mission. On day 7, I put down the new coral chest and sorted my loot a bit, and then tried to upgrade the grandfather clock in my house by putting an item frame down and turning it invisible with amethyst, and then adding a clock. However, right after doing this, I learned that I could make a clock block, so I immediately switched it out. I ended up crafting an iron backpack because I thought it would gain more storage space like the ones in Dawncraft. However, all it did was make my backpack uglier and gave a little bit of armor. I wasted a block and eight iron on it, and I can't even upgrade it into diamond or netherite without shearing the iron off. I then went to start a farm with all the crops I had obtained throughout my eight days on this world. I made wooden buckets for the water because why not, and I worked hard to make a row for each crop. I worked into the night and eventually got snuck up on by a creeper who made me lose some of my crops entirely. While trying to choke a mission out of this raven, a demon actually showed up behind me for me to slay. And I 100% stood up to him and did not run like a little bitch. Anyway, with my bright red flame blade I took out the demon. However, right after, yeah, the creeper blew up the front of my house. And since I had no extra spruce wood and he just completely obliterated the blocks, I had to use a placeholder of oak, and since this was the end of the night 7, I couldn't really go hunt down spruce wood. So yeah, for a parting present, I'd received a disfigured home. What a great way to end an amazing week of modded Minecraft. Anyway guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. I really did enjoy working on it, so if you guys did enjoy watching, uh, please let me know down in the comments and I'll continue. Who knows, maybe one day I'll reach 100 days or more on this world. Also, if you want to see this type of video for another pack, feel free to let me know, and I'll get it out when I can. Also, if you'd like to see this in like a hardcore style, like how most 100 days are uh, edited and stuff, uh, let me know down in the comments as well, because I would really like to try it. However, there's no promising that I'll reach anywhere near 100 days on one of those packs, because as you saw in this, I couldn't even survive a week. Comments are all that I really beg for you to leave. However, if you wanted to see more of my content, uh, you know, you could do the other things so the algorithm pushes my videos to you. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you when I see you.